I'm going to tell you what happened to me last night, and it requires a little bit of backstory if you're not familiar with the Arkansas Ten Commandments monument. I promise you the ending is worth it. I wouldn't waste your time, and I'll try to keep it to just the important parts. Okay, in 2015, an Arkansas state senator named Jason Rapert began a push to get a standalone Ten Commandments monument installed outside the state capitol. Why? I don't know, because I guess every other problem in Arkansas had been solved and this was next on his agenda. Or maybe because he values the Bible more than the Constitution. Which is really a problem when you're an elected official and not just a preacher. He happens to be both. And he thinks everyone else should be Christian too, and putting up the commandments is a way to achieve that. The point is, it's something that would never be considered much less permitted if a non-Christian tried it. Anyway, atheists and Satanists wanted to get in on this action, so they offered to donate their own displays to the Capitol grounds. No taxpayer money, just give us space. But Republican legislators in 2017 unanimously passed a bill giving them final approval over any proposals. And wouldn't you know it, they said yes to the Ten Commandments monument and no to all the other ones. Shocking. The whole thing is the subject of a lawsuit that is still being fought today. A judge was going to hear the case this month, but it got postponed temporarily because of the pandemic. To be clear, this monument is illegal. The Supreme Court said in 2005 that a standalone Christian monument at the state capitol or outside a courthouse is wrong. That is a clear endorsement of a particular religion by the government, obviously. It might be fine if it's part of a larger display, maybe with many monuments showing the history of law, but it's not okay if it's just an advertisement for Christianity, which is all that this Arkansas monument is. That's basically what the church-state separation groups are arguing in court. But in the meantime, the monument is still up. I should tell you that in 2018, a guy literally drove his car into the Arkansas Monument and destroyed it. He was a self-described born-again Christian who struggled with mental illness. Just a sad story all around. But the monument was replaced, and that's the one currently up there. Rapert even got a $25,000 donation from the people who made the movie God's Not Dead. A couple other things you should know about Jason Rapert. I've been a critic of his for a long time, and he knows it. He's one of those far-right, Republican, Christian nationalist lawmakers who fantasizes about creating a theocracy, at least as far as he can take it under U.S. law. He even started a group called the National Association of Christian Lawmakers to bring together all the other elected officials just like him. They're holding their first big meeting next month with special guest Mike Huckabee. Yay. Rapert has also announced that he plans to run for lieutenant governor of Arkansas in 2022. And just for the record, Sarah Huckabee Sanders, Mike's daughter and Trump's former press secretary, has said she might be interested in running for governor that year. So just a match made in hell. Okay, I'm skipping over a lot of details, but now you're up to speed. So a couple of weeks ago, Rapert visited a church in Missouri to deliver a sermon. It was an in-person service. The video showed people were not social distancing. They were very close to each other. It's really hard to find anyone in the video wearing masks. But Rapert didn't seem to care. He just gave his sermon. And that's a little weird because he's actually been pretty good about wearing masks. He's posted pictures on Facebook for months now in which he's wearing them. But he's also been an opponent of the governor's mask mandate requiring people to wear them. He thinks it should be a personal choice, which kind of defeats the whole purpose of masks. If some people choose not to wear them, the virus will keep spreading. He also posted this weird thing on Facebook saying the political response to the COVID crisis shutting everything down and making people wear masks, has been completely over the top. If anything, and everyone else in the world knows this, the United States is not doing nearly enough to flatten the curve. 
And then guess what happened? Last week, Rapert got COVID. He was in the hospital. It was bad. He was actually diagnosed with pneumonia, but he also tested positive for the virus. Here's what I said on my site when I heard about that. I have not edited this since I posted it. I don't take any joy in his sickness. I would much rather see him defeated in an election. That said, this is a guy whose party has dragged its feet on protecting people from the virus and who himself was recently in a church where precautions were ignored. What did he think would happen? That God would protect him? This is one hell of a way to find out that's not how health works. Here's to his quick recovery. And then, when he runs for lieutenant governor in 2022, as he has already indicated he will, here's to a defeat so disastrous he leaves public office for good. I stand by all of that. It seems totally fair. So on Tuesday of this week, a news website called the Arkansas Times found out that earlier this month, four women had gone up to the Ten Commandments monument and poured some olive oil all over it. They were anointing it for God, a symbolic ritual. That might seem harmless, except you can't pour oil on monuments like this. It could do permanent damage. A lawmaker in Washington state recently did the same thing. He poured olive oil on the steps of the Capitol to cleanse it after a demonstration he didn't like. And the Capitol Police later sent him a bill for cleanup and repair that cost over $4,700. So what did the Arkansas Capitol Police do about these women, especially considering they were caught in the act of anointing the monument? Well, one cop wrote them up for possible prosecution, detailing what they had done, but leaving the decision to higher-ups. Fine. But the powers that be said they were not going to pursue it. They couldn't prove any criminal intent. They believed the women were not trying to deface the monument, and we don't know if there's any damage just yet. Honestly, I don't even have a problem with that. I don't know what we would gain by going after these women. Can you even imagine the headlines? Government targets Christians for blessing a monument. Without a price tag to the damage, which we don't have yet, it seems like what they did was relatively harmless. But I was curious what Jason Rapert thought about it. Was he okay with what they did? What if they caused any damage? Or was he comfortable letting it all slide no matter what? Did he even know this happened since he's been in the hospital? So, Tuesday night, I sent him a quick Facebook message asking him if he had any comment. I've reached out to him for comment before. He actually got mad at me once because I didn't do that one time, so I try to do it whenever I write about him. Just a common courtesy, if nothing more. And if he gets back to me, I'll include what he says in any article I write. I did not expect him to respond, given his health concerns. But he did respond. And he was furious. Let me show you our conversation. Here's me. Hey there, hope you're back home and feeling better. If you have any comment about the women who are anointing the monument, is that a thing you're okay with? Please let me know. First, I got an automated response, saying he'll get back to me soon. But then, I got a real response. Let's go through it. I am not okay with your baloney article trying to say I said COVID-19 was a hoax, you little liar. I never said that. I have worn masks, urged masks, and urged common sense for months. You and your little demon buddies were responsible for tons of messages wishing me to die while fighting in the hospital, you little jerk. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. If I were a Democrat, it would be national news for the outrage at you and your ilk wishing me to die while I am battling a deadly disease. Don't you ever contact me again for anything, you little scumbag. Wow. I mean, I am a little scumbag, and you are all my little demon buddies. It's just weird for a sitting state senator to say it to me directly. Just to finish this conversation off, I responded with, not accurate, but okay then. And he said, you crossed a line that you will regret. I am outing all of you. 
Okay. So how was your night? I don't know how he's going to out me. I hope he doesn't tell people I'm an atheist. I just want to point out, what I said before was that Rapert has worn masks himself, and that's good. And he opposed the statewide mask mandate, which was irresponsible of him. And yes, he promoted the idea that the political response to the COVID crisis was overblown. The article even calls that response a hoax. Not the virus itself, but the reaction to it. Reading is not his strong suit. And I definitely did not, and would not, wish for anything bad to happen to him. Again, I'd much rather see him humiliated in an election than sick in a hospital. Because I'm not a monster. I certainly didn't tell people to send him nasty messages. You shouldn't do that. There's nothing in what I wrote publicly or privately that should be national news since all I did was point out some facts. That the guy who visited a church that doesn't care about COVID and the guy who opposed the statewide mask mandate caught COVID. Who could have guessed? If he's mad at anyone, it should be the people who convinced him it was a good idea to attend an out-of-state church for an in-person service where precautions were ignored. Somehow he walked into a modern hellscape and thought nothing of it. Maybe when he finally comes to his senses, he'll support sensible COVID restrictions. And maybe one day he'll even learn the government isn't a church where he can just spread his religious propaganda. I don't think either of those things will happen, but at least I can sleep soundly knowing I'm not the guy in this story lashing out at someone for asking a completely simple and fair question.